is Colton Melha from Matrix Robotics with Chips and Tricks video number 5 about rubber band powered racers. This is great for team building exercises or to use in the classroom. I recommend limiting the racers to either a certain number of parts or you could limit them to a size um, and for sure limit them to the same number of rubber bands uh, or surgical tubing like I'll be using in this video. In this video I'm going to be using um, Latex rubber surgical tubing. You can find this on Amazon. 50 feet is $20, um, or there's lots of other places you can find it. Um, it's a really good deal. It goes a long way. I like it better than rubber bands because you can select your own length, um, cut it to size, and then give that to students. Uh, to use this, I recommend using about 16 inches. So I'm going to first do is measure out 16 inches and then I'll cut it off and then you can take both ends of your surgical tubing twist them around and tie them into one knot which uh, even after a little practice is a little tricky initially I was using zip ties, zip ties work very well for this um, but then I found that tying it in a knot works just as well in that way you don't need to use zip ties. And sometimes if you do zip ties wrong, they can cut through the surgical tubing. That's no good. So I tied in a knot. That way I have one loop of surgical tubing. It's your rubber band that's very stretchy and uh, you can customize the length of it. It turns out that it can stretch to about twice its length pretty well. And that's where it about maxes out. So you can accommodate for that in your rubber band car. Now, if, you're not a, if you are a student, if you're not a teacher or a mentor, turn off the video right now. I challenge you to go make your own racer car, uh, challenge your friends, make it out of matrix parts and surgical tubing or matrix parts or rubber bands. If the rubber bands aren't long enough, you can tie them together. But go challenge your friends and then come back after the challenge and see how you can improve your racers uh, based on my recommendations or see if you beat uh, my record. My record for the car I'm going to show is 110 feet. See if you can beat that. Just using matrix parts. So, if you're a student, again, turn off the video right now. I'll wait. Okay, so we've got students now who have already tried the challenge, or mentors and teachers. Now, a few recommendations on this. Um, so if your students get stuck, or if they make a car and they want to make improvements, I have recommendations as to how you can make your car better. Um, there are three main ones. One is weight over the drive wheels. Make sure those drive wheels have a lot of traction on the ground. Number two is make sure the rubber bands release after all of the tension is gone. And number three is make sure there's no friction in the system. I mean, go in depth on all of these. Now this is my racer. Um, actually, I've got number four. Number four is to make sure the rubber bands don't get hung up on the wheels. I've got that in this car too. So the rubber band on this racer starts on these two posts and it will stay there. Um, I could cut off these ends of it to make sure it doesn't hit this front wheel. That would be good. So it starts on these two posts and then on the back of it, it has a um, brass bushing that the rubber band loops over. So I'm going to loop it over that back part and then we can take the drive wheels and we'll twist the drive wheels and I twist them until uh, the rubber band doesn't come any farther and actually my limiting factor on this car is that they will start to hit the um, L-beams that are the main frame of the robot of the <laughs> robot of the car so twist it until it doesn't go any farther and then we can go put it down somewhere and release the wheels and when I release the rubber band is going to pull the wheels um, until the rubber band is off of the axis and it will release from the wheels. Uh, the trick behind that is that the, um, the wheels can keep spinning after the rubber band releases. If the rubber band did not release, it would wind up the opposite direction and then it's really funny because the car will start going in reverse and it will come almost back to the person who released the car initially. It's really funny to watch. You can see the wheels keep going and going and going and going and going. Uh, and that's the key to making the rubber band car go very far. And the rubber band got caught on this standoff. 
If it did not get caught on that sand off, it might have gone too far and get hung up in the front wheel or it might have got stuck on the back wheels. That could also slow down your car. Uh, number two, weight over the back wheels. I chose wheels that are grippy, uh, they're kind of heavy, so the main weight over on the car is over the back wheels. That's going to give it a lot of uh, traction when the car takes off. Uh, number three is make sure that the um, car doesn't have any friction. So if you're winding up the rubber band on the back axle, you want to make sure the rubber band is not going to hit any of the parts back here that are standing still and the rubber band will get caught on those. Also, make sure that everything is spaced very well so that you're not squeezing on the frame of the car. Um, nothing's hitting back there. That's very important. And that's how you can make a very good rubber band racer out of matrix parts. You can find the instructions for building this racer on the Matrix Robotics blog online. Go to matrixrobotics.com uh, to build this racer. Again, this went 110 feet. Um, and I'm using 16 inches of surgical tubing and just tied it in a knot on this side. Good luck. You can find distributors of Matrix Robotics building system at matrixrobotics.com. If you have questions about this video or suggestions for future videos, please send me an email at support at matrixrobotics.com and I'll get right back to you. Now go get your robot on. If you build a racer that beat my record or if your racer is really cool or if you just built a racer, send it to me. Send it to support at matrixrobotics.com and I'll post it on the Matrix blog and on the Facebook page. Since you're still watching the video, I'm going to give you another couple of suggestions. One of them is that you could have a competition for how far the racer goes total, or you could have a different competition which is uh, whichever racer, let's say, reaches 20 feet the fastest. So all the students could release their racers from the same spot and see which one goes gets there first. You could have something that hits so it makes a noise and they know which one gets there first. Um, two different ways you can have stage competition. Or it could be both. You could have two winners for it. That's pretty fun. <laughs> oh, that one's fun.